Did we finish all the egg parts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, we talked about this a little as our question of the day, some of the characteristics and traits of mammals. Um, and there are some, so there's some general traits, like you guys were giving me um, things like having a backbone or multicellular, but there are some specific characteristics of mammals that make them unique from the other types of vertebrates, okay? So the mammals, one of their characteristics that's important is how they provide nutrition for their young, okay? Mammals are unique because they have um, special glands called mammary glands, which produce milk, which their young nurse from in order to provide their nutrition in the beginning of their life. And so what this means is, compared to the other groups, especially compared to fish, amphibians, and reptiles, mammals generally have um, parents caring for the offspring for a period of time after birth to um, allow them time to finish their full development and become independent. And they do that by nursing their young using mammary glands. Mammals also have hair or fur at some point during their life. Now, some mammals have more fur, some have less, some only have it in early stages of development. Um, it depends, but hair and fur is a unique trait of mammals. Mammals, like birds, have a four-chambered heart, two atrium and two ventricles. Who could remind me of the advantage of a four-chambered heart? What is the, the benefit? Nevaeh? Double, so you get two for each. OK, so there's two sides. There's two atrium, two ventricles. But how does that, how is that helpful? Four times. Nia? Um, it doesn't like they stay separate with the. What does, yep. The oxygen. The oxygenated blood that's in the mammal's body stays completely separated from deoxygenated blood. There's no mixing, and that allows for more oxygen to be transported to the cells. Mammals breathe using a muscle called the diaphragm, uh, a sheet of muscle stretched below the ribs. And when it contracts and relaxes, allows the mammal to breathe. Every time you breathe in, you're contracting your diaphragm. Compared to the other vertebrates, mammals have quite highly developed brains. Their brains are generally larger than um, equivalently sized you know, reptiles or amphibians or fish or birds. So these are some general characteristics. They're also warm-blooded. Mammals can be active at all temperatures because they generate internal body heat. They maintain a constant body temperature. So you can find mammals in extreme cold conditions and they can still survive. Like an ant okay. Yes. Like a polar bear is that a mammal? Yeah, yep, like a polar bear, for example, can live in cold conditions, but still be active and moving around constantly because it's generating its own um, body. Anthony? Okay. Well, what's the difference between air It's really the same. All right, so we're going to talk about now, if I asked you to think about a mammal, most of you would be thinking about one specific type of mammal called the placental mammal, because that's what most mammals are. 95% of mammals are what we call pl um, placental mammals. But there's a couple other types of mammals. Okay? One unique type of mammal is called the monotremes. And there's only a couple examples of monotremes. Okay? Um, and a monotreme, do you know what makes a platypus is an example. Do you know what makes them different from the other types of mammals? Jake? They have a, I, I have two guesses. Okay. Okay. One was they have a beak. Well, that the platypus does, but the other type of monotreme doesn't. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna guess web feet. No, that's another one that the, the platypus does have those, but that's not what makes it different as much. Haley? 
They lay eggs. So these are mammals that lay eggs, which is, is not what is typical of most mammals. Most mammals do not lay eggs. What, like turtles? Turtles are reptiles. Well, they are. So monotremes are mammals. They have fur. They have mammary glands. Okay, they have the characteristics we just talked about. But they don't give birth to live young. They give birth, um, they lay eggs. And then from those eggs hatch their young. And that's different. Okay? Um, the examples are the duck-billed platypus. This thing I'm sure you've seen before. And like Jake was just saying, it has some interesting features. It has like a bill, like a bird almost. It has webbed feet. It has fur. Um, and another interesting fact is that duck-billed platypus are the only venomous mammals. They have these spurs, these little sort of um, claws almost, near their um, hind legs that have a venom in them. And if they um, stab an animal or something, they um, can poison it. And it's, I guess it's very painful if like a person ever gets um, hit by one of these um, spurs. It's super painful. They could kill small mammals even. Um, so most, that's the only venomous mammal actually. And so they lay eggs that are very, very small. The other type is the spiny anteater. It's also a monotreme. I'll show you pictures of the spiny anteater on the next page. Um, Perry. So the spiny anteater, echidna is another term for it. Um, they're interesting. The milk they produce in their mammary glands is actually pink. Not, yeah, you can write that there. Not because it's like strawberry milk, but because it is um, very rich in iron, which good. gives it a pink color. And they lay, so both the um, platypus and spiny anteater, they lay very, very small eggs. You can see on the sides here, this is the egg in the middle, smaller than even a penny. And so they lay these tiny eggs which hatch, but when they hatch, the young are very, very immature and the young have to nurse for a long time. They're dependent on the mother. They stay attached for a long time and in very close proximity until they can finish growing and developing and become an independent, um, an independent organism. Here's what they look like. This is a while after birth. Okay, So this is after this um, spiny anteater has um, nursed for a while and started to grow in size. This is before its spines which are like a modified fur, have developed. Um, it's another example. How does that even walk? Um, at, at this point, it probably is not walking. And eventually, as they mature, this is what a, a mature spiny anteater looks like. Kind of looks like a porcupine. Yeah. But they have this long snout that they use, and they, they eat um, insects. Obviously, it's an anteater, and they probe around in the dirt to eat insects, and that's, that's how they eat. Okay, so I've always been wondering this. Okay, I have a dog. The collie, and I've always been wondering why does it have such a big nose? That's just what they're been bred to have. All right, so we have one group, monotremes, which is just a couple things. The second group is also a relatively small group of mammals called marsupials. And I know you've heard of marsupials. What are some marsupials you're familiar with? A kangaroo. A kangaroo. <gasps> Wait. What else? A dolphin. No. <laughs> um, a koala. Um, no, not a sloth. Aren't they the same thing? No. So marsupials are pouched mammals. We'll talk about this in a minute. Including things like a kangaroo, koala. Where are those things native to? Australia. Africa. Australia. Oh. Um, but there are marsupials that do live in North America. Does anyone know what marsupial lives around here? <clears throat> no. A possum. Oh, really? So an opossum is um, a marsupial that lives in North America, and it's uh, they're nocturnal. They live around here. Often they, they live up in trees and stuff. They're usually nocturnal and move around at night, so you might not often see them. Sometimes you're driving around, you might see them um, running across the street or something. A lot of times they end up dead in the side of the road because people oh, don't see them at night as they're driving. Like those yeah, I'll, I'll show you a picture of one in a minute. But again, it's another marsupial. These marsupials give birth to young, live young. So they don't lay eggs. They give birth to live young. But the young is this tiny little, very, very immature um, organism. 
So this is a kangaroo Whoa. Um, newborn. It's tiny. It's smaller than a penny. It can't even really do much. After it's born, it basically crawls into a pouch on the mother's um, abdomen and goes into that pouch. It nurses. The mammary glands are located in the pouch and it stays in there and nurses for a very long time, up to nine months and stays even, goes back and forth in that pouch for well over a year after that. So they are born immature, go into the pouch, finish um, maturing in the pouch until they're ready to be independent. Um, so here's obviously this tiny little kangaroo newborn goes to mm -hmm. what we would call a joey is a young kangaroo Looks over like a period out. of time of a little over a year. Don't they like drop kick? No. <laughs> so uh, a koala is another example of um, a marsupial. Right. And that's the uh, that's an opossum. Those are the uh, marsupials that live around here. I never thought they were called opossums. Yeah, I thought they were called opossums. It's spelled opossum, but people say it saying just possum. I say possum. All right, so I guess here's what I want to do. I'm going to go finish our notes, then I'm going to come back to this kangaroo video because it's pretty it's cool, but I want to finish these notes first. All right, now most mammals that you're familiar with are what we call placental mammals. Placental mammals. Um, are 95% all, all mammals, and these, the young, develop internally. So if we're thinking about, like so birds had what type of fertilization? Um, internal. internal. And what kind of development? External. external. Mammals, most mammals, have internal fertilization as well, but then they have internal development. After that egg cell is fertilized by a sperm cell, it grows into the offspring internally inside of the female. And that's what happens with placental mammals. It's 95% of all mammals. And if we look at a placental mammal that's starting to grow and develop, here obviously is the embryo. Wait, do you have to write the embryo? Yes, label it. And what is this attached to the embryo? I don't know what that would be. The umbilical What? The <laughs> Somebody else said it. <laughs> it's the umbilical cord. What and what does the umbilical cord connect? It connects the embryo to what? The amber. The what? baby. Yeah, do you know what organ in the mother it's connected to? Yeah, that just Not quite. No, it comes from the name of this type of mammal. Oh, I don't, oh, oh. The placenta. Chickpea. So the placenta is an organ that develops inside of the uterus of the female. And the placenta has, it has blood vessels from the mother running right next to blood vessels from the embryo so that material can be transferred back and forth. So nutrients from the mother can transfer into the blood of the embryo in the placenta and be carried to it. Waste products that are being created by the embryo can diffuse into the mother's blood and she can then get rid of those waste products by exhaling, okay, or by excreting those waste in different ways. So that's how placental ma mammals develop. Obviously, humans are placental mammals and humans develop inside of the uterus the placenta forms on the wall of the uterus. It's connected to the fetus through the umbilical cord. Um, and um, that's an example of a placental mammal. Just a couple other views. Uh, again, we have the fetus late in development. You can see the umbilical cord attached. This is the placenta. And so that placenta is where we have the exchange of nutrients between mother and offspring. Okay? Again, just another view. The placenta is filled with blood vessels attach the umbilical cord, which attaches to the ab into, goes into the abdomen of the fetus, and eventually after birth, um, cut it's cut and it becomes the navel, the belly button, is where your umbilical cord at one time connected you to the placenta Wait, in so the womb. Wait, that if you were to cut it right here, that'd be your belly button? No, it's it comes out right where the belly button is, right? Do you the pull end. it or do you cut it with scissors? Cut it with scissors. The okay. I mean, animals just, just um, Gnaw it off. Now what do you know? Yeah, in humans, it's usually the doctor, you, sometimes the father cuts it. No, there's no nerve endings in the umbilical cord, you just cut it. It's like cutting off so what do rubbery you hose. Cut it? Uh, <laughs> no, you cut it right after birth. 
and then there's a little, so then the doctor, we're going to talk about all this in our next video, but the doctor clamps it off, and then the, then the part that's after the tied off part turns black and falls off, and you left the regular belly button. Yes, Jay, quickly. Okay, so you know how it's like head down? Yes. Uh, you know how it comes out head down? Yeah, usually. What if it, what it, if it turns around? What yeah, so we're going to, oh, yeah. so I'm not going to, I'll just answer this question because when we get to human reproduction and human bias, we talk about all these things, so I won't go into all of it now. But yeah, usually in the humans, the baby's born head first. That's the easiest way for it to fit through the cervix and through the birth canal and through the pelvis. But there are times when it's not in the correct position and it may be feet first, and that's called a breech position. And the baby can be born naturally in the breech position. It's more difficult for the mother and delivery takes longer. Wow. And sometimes it may lead to um, them having to do a C-section, but it, it, they can be born um, feet first. Um, but usually head first is the, the easier way. All right, so I'm gonna go back here and show you this um, kangaroo video and then I'll give you a chance to work on your homework. Jake, turn around, please. Oh.